got the new face shift demo and I figured out how to network it to my Maya by first clicking the network streaming on the tracking menu then going under file in Maya launch face shift and then make sure that my host address is right and press connect and if it's done correctly it should work then go to the file in examples macaw and load scene and it loads this face that you can use immediately but what is up with these sliders these are awesome what do these things do they're like all over the place i've never seen anything like this it's got some text got a little button on it can't move it around it seems to be locked in place and when you move it it's attached to the face so you can tweak your mocap after you record it and if we look up here in the outliner to try and see what this thing's made of you open it up and it's just a bunch of curves and it doesn't really tell you anything about where this came from or how to make it and you look down here at the text and the text is a bunch of curves too and it gives you no clues as to how this is made and i looked all over the internet i looked on google I looked on youtube there was nothing so you want to go to maya Go into the four scene view, click on the front scene, press space. Then we're going to go to our CV curve tool, reset the options. We want to choose linear. Then we go up here to this little magnet button and click that, and that'll snap. We want to press X while we're clicking, and it will snap our vertices to the curves. We're going to leave it open. And then go up here to edit curves, drop down to open close curves, press that, and that will complete our little square. Then I'm going to scale it down. First, I want to center pivot. I'm going to put it on zero. It took me 24 hours to research this information and figure out how these little sliders were made. Now we're going to freeze our transformations to keep it centered. Then control D to duplicate. We're going to squish it down and make it smaller for the handle. Move that down to the bottom. Can make our bar just a little bit skinnier. And then we want to select our bar and our handle. We're going to delete by type history. It's pretty common. And go to modify, freeze transformations. Then we just want to select the bar. We're going to go up to Windows, General Editors. Going to scroll down to channel control. In the channel control in the center, we want to go all the way down and find where it says template. Then we're going to move it into the keyable attributes in the channel box. Then select it and type 1, which will turn it to on. Now it's in template mode. So you can see we can't select it. And we're going to select our handle. We're going to translate it in the Y. So we want to select all our keyable attributes, control click to deselect the translate Y, and then we're going to lock and hide the rest of the attributes. Next, we want to go to the attribute editor and select the shape node. We're going to go down to limit information, 
and pick the translate tab. Then under translate Y, we're gonna set the minimum value to zero because that's where it starts. Then we're gonna go over to the maximum value and watch me get stuck and confused. By increasing the maximum value to five, that should give us plenty of room to move here. We go up to the top of the bar and we're gonna set the maximum value to reflect the highest movement. Then enter that. As you can see now, the handle is locked onto the bar, so you can't pull it off of there. Is that neat or what? And then we're going to go back, we're going to change the name and the outliner. We're going to call the bar bar and the handle handle. Then we're going to group them by pressing Control G. First, I have to sit here and look at how cool this is again because I've never seen anything like it before. I'm so tickled that I figured this out by myself. You can just like grab anywhere on this and like throw it around and it's not going to fall apart. It's gonna stay there and look really professional forever. By the way, I found this in Digital Tutors, Facial Rigging in Maya, chapter five, lesson 29, creating the GUI, and also chapter six, locking and limiting attributes. So we click and then control click to singly select them and control G to group them. Then we're going to call our group sliders. And now that they're grouped, we can move this bar around even though it's been templated. It doesn't have any translate controls. We can move it around in the group. Place it up out of the way so it doesn't interfere with our scene. Next, we're going to set some deformers i'm actually going to cheat i'm going to skip the deformer process just go straight to the set driven key i'm pressing five on my keyboard to smooth shade then we want to select the animation menu go to animate set driven key and set we're going to load our handle as our driver Eventually, we're going to select the translate Y as the driver. We're going to select our circle and scale in the X for the driven. Then we're going to key at the current positions. We'll grab our handle and raise it to the upper limit. We'll grab our sphere and we will scale it in the X. We will key it again. And now we have a deformer which is locked into this handle and the sphere. So the handle controls the deformer. Next, we're going to do the text. If you go under create, you go down to text, open up the options box and type in whatever the text is that you want to type in here. I'm going to use thinner. Then you can also select the type of text. And in this case, we're going to use curves as opposed to polygons. Hit create, and then we have our curve based text. I'm going to scale it down. Right here, all of a sudden, my hotkeys quit working, so I have to do it manually. Not sure what happened there. And we'll move it into place under our slider so it has a nice professional looking label still just a bit large and once we have it into place we are going to Control select the group. We're going to parent it to our group. 
Then with the text selected, once again, we're going to go to Windows, General Editors, go down to Channel Control. In the center column, we're going to scroll down and select Template and add it to the keyable attributes. In the channel box, again, we're going to press 1 to turn Template on. Also, you can press 0 to turn it off. Now we can't select our text. But if we select the group, we can still move it into position as a single node. And there is our slider, which I never get tired of playing with. This is way too cool. I have never seen anything like this. Whoever invented this is the coolest person ever. Next, or later on, we're going to go into making a custom model in Dazed. Then transferring it into Marvelous Designer to make clothing. We're going to go over the pros and cons of using Face Robot in Autodesk Soft Image. Finally, we're going to import all of our assets into Maya so that we can connect them to face shift to record our mocap before adding the hair and doing our final animation. <laughs> 